Hi guys, I just watched uh, a two-hour interview, Tucker Carlson's interview with Vladimir Putin, and I'm ready to share with you the, the main takeaways from that interview, in case you are curious. Uh, by the way, you can uh, send me your condolences, because I, I had to watch all this uh, for work and for, for, um, for you guys to tell you uh, what, uh, which narratives I noticed. So, first of all, I will tell you about the main narratives, but first of all, I uh, I should say that Putin didn't say anything new. It was all his old song he's telling, he's repeating all over and over again uh, for the Russian-speaking audience, of course, and we heard uh, all uh, his narratives we heard in this interview with Tucker Carlson. So nothing new. He just let Putin uh, to tell uh, his lies and uh, to tell his, uh, I don't know, fantasies about uh, history and uh, the past of uh, Russia and Ukraine again. Uh, and uh, by the way, about history, here uh, comes the first uh, main narrative of this interview. The first narrative is that Ukraine is an artificial state, that Ukraine never existed, that Ukrainian nation never existed. There was no such a nation, such an ethnicity, such a language, because it was one language, one uh, one nation and uh, so on. You know, it's uh, it's a uh, it's an old uh, narrative from uh, from Soviet Union uh, era, from Stalin era, and Putin is repeating it. And uh, actually, the war against Ukraine is based on that narrative. So Ukraine is an artificial state. And the interesting thing is that um, Putin started this interview with a half an hour. Can you imagine this? half an hour, 32 minute speech about the history of Russia and Ukraine. Well, uh, from history of Russia, uh, apparently, because he thinks that Ukraine never existed. So he told Tucker Carlson right away that, look, I will give you, uh, if we have a serious talk, he said, it's not a talk show, it's a serious conversation. So if you want a serious conversation, I will give you a historical uh, lecture, let's say. He didn't say the word lecture, but uh, something like that. So I will tell you uh, in-depth information about the history. And Tucker Carlson agreed, and then Putin uh, was talking for 32 minutes. And uh, Tucker Carlson actually tried to interrupt him once, uh, but Putin scolded him for that. He said again that it was not a talk show, it was a serious conversation, and uh, he wants to, uh, to go to the end of the story. And he, he started actually from 1,000 years ago from Rurik, then uh, he told uh, him about uh, no Novgorod and Kiev, and you know, it's very hard to follow, it's very hard to follow, almost impossible, because he twists the history, uh, he he starts uh, his speech, like, from from uh, uh, from that uh, very um, old times, from, from 1,000 years ago, who is interested in that, and how can he explain the war, the aggression uh, against uh, against the state and uh, other state uh, with uh, something that happened 1,000 years ago that a that is a rhetorical question. We all know uh, that there is no answer to this question. However, Putin was talking again for 32 minutes uh, about to justify uh, his um, his thesis uh, that Ukraine is an artificial state, uh, and uh, he said also that uh, actually. Uh, the, uh, the Hungary can also, um, Viktor Orban, a Hungarian Prime Minister, uh, Tucker Carlson asked him, Putin about him, so uh, Tucker Car uh, uh, Viktor Orban can probably uh, go to go to Ukraine uh, and uh, say, look, we have, you have our territories, the, those territories used to be Hungarian, so we can take them, uh, like Russia took <laughs> to other territories, historical Russian territories. We can take Hungarian territories. Uh, I'm, uh, I apologize for those sounds. So I, I am recording this video without any text, just telling you my impression. So one, uh, narrative number one, uh, Ukraine is artificial state. We already heard this. Uh, the second uh, main narrative is that we didn't start this war. We are going to end this war. This is a, a thesis 
Putin repeats from the beginning of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. He's saying over and over, we didn't start that war. We, are, uh, we were forced to start uh, defending ourselves. It's not war. We're going to end the war. And in his opinion, as, as he told uh, Tucker Carlson, he said that um, the trigger of that war was that uh, Ukraine uh, did, uh, um, th that coup d'etat happened in Ukraine 2014. Uh, you know, that revolution of dignity happened and I lived there in Ukraine in that time and I know what really happened as many people knows what, uh, know what really happened. So in Putin's opinion, it uh, and it's one of the main Russian propaganda narratives since uh, 2014, uh, that it was coup d'etat, uh, illegal, uh, and uh, neo-Nazis uh, came uh, to power in Ukraine. And since then, um, they have neo-Nazi government. And uh, that's why so coup d'etat, neo-Nazis came, uh, neo came to power, and uh, that's why it was all um, triggered. It, it triggered the full-scale invasion. Uh, invasion why eight years after that happened who knows we don't know why Putin if he if he thinks it was a trigger why um, why was he waiting all this time eight years we don't know but anyways the uh, narrative number two is that we didn't start that war we are going to end this war uh, Ukraine and collective West and the United States they started that war and actually in that narrative, we have another narrative uh, that is very um, like widespread in Russia that um, the collective West, so-called collective West and the US, they tricked Russia, they fooled Russia. They promised something, then they didn't, um, they didn't do it. And uh, about NATO, I mean, and uh, that the NATO won't expand. And so they tricked Russia into that and Russia believed, uh, Kremlin believed, and then uh, they just fooled Russia. So, and the main idea is that collective West West uh, and Ukraine uh, and, and European countries, they are always trying to trick Russia and to fool Russia. Uh, and poor, uh, naive uh, Vladimir Putin and Kremlin, they believe because, because Russian people, they are so honest, they are so uh, naive and, and, you know, like pure, uh, like a first snow. And they, they just don't, uh, they believe everybody, uh, poor people, and everybody is trying to trick them. Uh, so that was the second narrative. The third narrative is is about the United States, of course, that the life in the United States uh, is getting harder and harder. And actually, it's, uh, Putin feels really sorry for what is going in the United States because people are in trouble. The economy is going down. And as Putin said, uh, you guys are killing dollar with your own hands. That's what he said uh, to Tucker Carlson. So the life uh, in the United States is getting worse and worse. And uh, actually, the, the Americans, the American government is responsible for that. Uh, and uh, in Russia, life is obviously better. And uh, Putin actually said that he, he bragged that uh, while uh, while the American economy is going down, the Russian economy is actually blossoming. And now the Russian economy is number one in Europe, although uh, in, in terms of all those sanctions. And what's the point of, uh, of putting sanctions on Russia uh, while, uh, while our economy blossoms? Uh, so he bragged about that. So that was the third narrative that life in the U.S. Uh, is getting worse. The economy is going down and you guys need to do something about that. He didn't tell um, who he would like to see as a president of the United States. He said America is a complicated country. It's uh, like hard to understand it. So he didn't tell anything about his preferences. Uh, he mentioned his friendship uh, with Donald Trump just once. And he mentioned that he was friends uh, with uh, George Bush Jr. Uh, and um, the fourth narrative was about China. I would say uh, because he said that um, U.S., the U.S. and uh, the Western countries are more afraid of China than Russia is, in his opinion. Uh, he said, well, nothing is, uh, nothing is scary about China. We are not afraid of China. Uh, this is our neighbor. Uh, it's our friend. And um, he said that C is his friend, not, not only his colleague. Uh, and uh, finally, so these are four narratives that we already heard. Ukraine is artificial state, 
we didn't start this war, we are going to end it. Uh, life in the U.S. is getting worse and worse and uh, the opposite in Russia. We are not afraid of China. They are our friends and you guys should be afraid of China, uh, meaning, meaning the U.S. So four main narratives. And the fifth, uh, the fifth narrative, not, not a narrative, but the thing that is, uh, I would say, um, uh, like an interesting in that interview, although the whole interview was uh, insanely boring, I've heard Putin many times, so it was just a, a pain in the neck to watch it one more time, but uh, at the end of the interview, actually, um, Tucker Carlson asked him the question that uh, some people were expecting him to ask. He asked Putin about the destiny of the American journalist, the journalist of Wall Street Journal, Evan Gershkovich, who is now in Russian prison, uh, and uh, because they think he he is a spy, although he he was just a journalist, and uh, so Tucker Carlson asked Putin about Evan Gershkovich. He said that Gershkovich probably is not a spy; he is a, he is a journalist. And uh, what what are you going to do about that? He maybe maybe you can just send him home. And <laughs> here Putin used this is a very funny thing that you probably remember when. Russia stepped back, uh, Russia was forced to step back from, uh, from the Snake Island, famous Snake Island, you remember? And when they, uh, when they had to stay back, they said it was a gesture of goodwill. There were a lot of memes about that. So Putin used this expression, that meme, uh, talking about uh, Evan Gershkovich, the journalist of the Wall Street Journal. He said, well, we uh, we made so many gestures of uh, goodwill that we have run out of them, uh, he said. However, he said, in theory, we can say that we do not rule out that we can do that if our partners take reciprocal steps. What steps he, uh, he means? We can only guess. So I think he probably assumes some exchange and we can only guess who Russia wants in exchange for um, Evan Gershkovich. I wouldn't say it's like a good news, but at least we know that they're thinking about it. But we know what we don't know what uh, will be uh, the price and what Russia is expecting in exchange for Evan Gershkovich. So I would say this was the only one moment in the whole interview that was really um, like th that really had some information, some information, at least not much, but at least we knew something. And he asked him that important question in my, uh, in my opinion, maybe he read uh, Twitter and he saw that people were expecting him to ask Putin about the American citizen, uh, which is more, more than logical to ask. Uh, and so he ended his interview with this question. So uh, again, nothing new. I gave you all the main Main narratives. I I, I um, uh, gave you all the main uh, takeaways from that interview. We didn't hear anything new. All the same old songs and lies by Putin, twisted history, uh, fake news, and stuff like that. Um, and uh, so so nothing interesting. Maybe it will be interesting for the American audience, for some part of the American society that um, have never heard Putin and his explanation of the war. Uh, but uh, as, as a journalist uh, and uh, as a uh, R Russian journalist in, in the past and uh, as a Ukrainian journalist in the past, I can tell you guys, and as a linguist who was analyzing, who, who have been analyzing Putin for many years, uh, Putin's speeches, I can tell you that uh, there was nothing new in this two-hour interview. Uh, that's all. Thanks for watching me. Bye.